Hello and welcome to Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. I am your host, Raya Salter. I'm an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. I'm also the principal attorney of Imagine Power LLC. Power Up Hawaii is about a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To us here on the show, that means talking to all of the players who need to be engaged in the conversation, including those who don't currently have a seat at the energy policy table. Why is this important? A clean and just energy future means that all customers of electricity have access to clean, affordable, safe, and reliable power. This means access to clean generation and big improvements in energy efficiency. Remember, the goal is a Hawaii energy system transformed, one that is no longer dependent on expensive fossil fuel imports, crippling poor customers and holding back the state's economy. Why else is this important? As utilities invest in new clean and renewable energy assets, customers have increasing power to control their energy usage through new technology, including smart thermostats and smart meters. Now, there are apps and computer programs that allow customers to control their appliances and interact with the utility to choose different rate schemes. In addition, high-speed internet access will increasingly be used not only for providing energy services, but providing health care, social services, and other necessities of daily life. Of course, this also includes entertainment as well and communications, as interactivity with the internet our devices and each other becomes more and more intertwined. Here is another big reason why this is important. All customers will pay for these investments through their utility rates. This means that all customers, be they rich, poor, or business customers, need to be engaged in the decision decisions that happen now around energy. So this is a, me speaking a bit to why it's so important to talk to all the folks who need to be in the energy conversation and those who may not yet be in the energy conversation and how can we make sure that everyone's at the table. So today we will speak to Curtis Kropar, Executive Director of Hawaiian Hope. Hawaiian Hope is a technology-based nonprofit organization with the objective to expose the community to and increase their familiarity with technology. Hawaii, Hawaiian Hope has locations and operations in town and on the west side. Welcome, Curtis. Thank you. Thank you. So, Curtis, <clears throat> please, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about Hawaiian Hope and what you do? <clears throat> um, well, first, thanks for having me on the show. Um, uh, Hawaiian Hope, we are a technology-based nonprofit organization, as you said. Um, our main objective is to expose the community to the technology. And uh, basically, we're a bunch of geeks that, <laughs> that uh, hope to make a difference and impact you know, in, the, in the community. All right. Well, why is it important that poor and vulnerable populations have access to computers? And do you, in fact, focus on providing access to poor and vulnerable populations? Um, yes. We, we have a couple of different programs and projects that um, we focus mostly on low-income communities. Um, we have a project in Waianae right now that is our internet cafe, and it is uh, a public access facility. We have um, a bunch of computers set up. People can come in and get online. Actually, I believe we, maybe um, we may even have a couple of photos of some of your, um, uh, of some of your um, operations. And, yeah. Ah, there's the <clears throat> internet cafe. That's Fantastic. our internet cafe in Waianae. All right. And, uh, Please continue. Go ahead and continue. Yeah. Well, this this particular location is uh, you know really important because there's a lot of people in the area that it's it's a relatively you know low income area, um, and we've got a lot of homeless. Actually, this center out there also dub doubles as a homeless outreach service. Got it. And uh, we have a bunch of people that come in and they get online, check their email, do job applications. Um, and even people who are not homeless, they come in and use the computers constantly to print out documents they have may have a computer at home but don't have printers and, you know. Well, why, why is it important that poor and vulnerable populations have access to computers? Well, you know, every time we hear, every day, we hear somebody complaining about the homeless. Those people need to go get a job. And the bottom line is now that a lot of jobs, doesn't matter the expertise or the menialness of it, um, they require computers to use. And 
you know, if you're, you work in checkout at McDonald's, if you're working checkout at Zippy's, if you're, you know, you're punching buttons. You're doing something where you're interacting with technology. And now, even to just apply for the jobs, you have to apply online. Um, I was at, uh, I was walking through one of the plazas, you know, and there's the, it's the ice cream shop, right? Nice, hey, people know how to do this. They can figure out how to do the ice cream, right? There's a big help wanted sign in the window, and it's, I swear, it's three feet by three feet big. Help wanted. And there's this little sticky note. It says apply online. It's an ice cream shop. Isn't that something? Actually, I believe we have a picture of a, of a career fair that you guys had. Can you tell us a bit about that? <clears throat> oh, yeah. This is the uh, Workforce Career Fair. Um, actually, the next one's coming up February 1st. Oh, um, fantastic. Yeah. And uh, this is the job fair is at the Blaisdell. Um, we go and we set up about 40 computers at these events so people can come in, update their resumes. Um, they can, you know, same thing, make updates, check their email. Um, apply for a lot of jobs because even though you're at the job fair, um, you're at the job fair with two, three hundred recruiters. Um, a lot of them they still they hand you a business card, say here's our website, go apply online. So you know, um, so yeah, we provide the computers, we provide the technology, and the setup where people come in and and uh, you know do that. Yeah, and um, so you guys also um, donate. Com you you give computers. Yes. You donate computers. Yes, to we do. We give away a bunch of computers. Uh, this photo here is uh, one of our donations to the VA. Um, actually, it's the veterans, Fantastic. Uh, veterans who are formerly homeless, and Fantastic. they've now got housing. And in part of that program, we work with the VA, and they come down, pick up computers, and they provide them to the v to the vets at their new at their new houses. That's that's fantastic. Uh, this this photo here is uh, if you look at all of that pile of stuff. Um, that is 350 computers, and that is a single donation that came in to us. Um, and, and actually, that, that points out one of our key issues is physical space. Um, <clears throat> we're like up to here with, with, with... You guys got tons of equipment and donations equipment. and so much. Well, that, that's fantastic. Um, I'm so excited to hear about this work. So I want to speak a little bit to something that happened recently that I was privileged to be able to be sure. a part of. So there's a terrific event that happened um, Christmas Eve and Christmas morning, which is where we met, and I was a humble volunteer, which I appreciated very much. And it was a, an event called Home for the Holidays, and I think we had, in the end, it was about 65 kids. Mm -hmm. About 65 kids um, were hosted um, who um, are facing housing insecurity, homeless, living in shelters. And they came and they spent the night um, and uh, had a lovely dinner. They spent the night and also had Christmas morning um, at this location with tons of gifts. Um, it was a really wonderful event. Um, and you set up a, um, a computer cafe for the kids. Could you tell us a bit about your involvement in um, Home for the Holidays? Sure. Um, well, you know, I, I, saw their, uh, I saw their event from last year. And as soon as I saw it, I just, I, had to reach out and get involved with this because this is something that's that's very near dear to my heart. Um, you know, we've got a lot of kids out there that that uh, you know a lot of the, a lot of the homeless services are geared toward adults, and people forget that there are children that are homeless. You know, and and a lot of times we're so focused on the adults, and we're so focused on the fact that you know the the adults issues, but the fact is there are plenty of kids who are on the street on their own, and you know, they need some attention. Um, so yeah, we, we got involved with this event and uh, um, we set up a mini internet lab there. We had uh, 12 computers set up. Um, same thing, the kids can come in, get online, um, do their Facebook, do their play games, um, <clears throat> watch movies. Um, we, in, in, in doing that, we also happen to monitor the amount of data. Um, mm. We, <laughs> which surprised me, um, so when we do the job fairs, just as a comparison, when we do the job fairs, we, we go through about um, maybe four or five gig of data on 40 computers, right, across the whole network. Um, at this event for Christmas, um, we burnt through 18 gig of data in less than, in less than 12 hours. Um, wow, you know, on, on, on 12 computers. And uh, it, it was pretty impressive. So yeah, the kids were having a blast. They were playing games and watching videos and, you know, 
it was it was fun. They, it was they, a lot of fun. They, they really, the teens especially, really enjoyed the computer center, and um, you could just really see the young people getting a chance to really kind of relax um, and spend some time, you know, investigating the internet in peace. Yeah. Um, and yep. I know that around three in the morning. I climbed onto one of those air mattresses and fell asleep, but I believe that you stayed up all night. Three, lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was uh, yeah, the, the kids, um, I think the last one finally went to sleep about 5 a.m. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, about 5 a.m. the last one went to sleep, so. Well, I think one of the things, and I, I had wanted to share some videos, but one of the things that happened in the morning that I thought was so incredibly special was a really special gift from you to every single one of the children in attendance. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, <clears throat> we, we wanted to really figure out how do we make the most impact for these kids. Um, you know, not just something that's gonna make them feel good for a few minutes or a day or so, um, but we want something to, to really, you know, show them. First, people are thinking about them. Um, and two is we wanna give them something that's gonna last, have an impact and give them opportunity. Um, and so what we did was, um, and it wasn't just me, it was my crew, my volunteers, our volunteers. Um, you know, we've got a bunch of people who work on projects like this all the time. And so, but what we did is we put together um, 60, 65 laptops and every single child at the event got a laptop. So, and it was, it was, it was awesome. It was, it Can was I pretty say, awesome. I just remembering it was so, special the way first of all nani maderos and her crew they're just like christmas heroes it oh, was yeah. the most lovely event and she had so many gifts for the children they had gift cards i mean they had everything the that, gift cards were a huge hit that was oh yes oh that was a huge hit they were, these these kids got a true christmas with really awesome gifts and then the way she announced it with a surprise, you know, she was like, okay guys, each and every one of you is gonna get a laptop to take home and just everyone started screaming. Yeah. It was just the loveliest sort of Christmas morning thing for the young people. It was really nice and special. Um, so I just, I just, um, I was glad to have met you um, and I'm glad we got to speak to that a bit. Sure. But I know that there's a lot more that you guys do could you talk a little bit more about the services that you offer at these locations? I know you have the Internet Cafe in Waianae. You also, um, you operate also in town. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, um, <clears throat> our Internet Cafe is in Waianae. Um, it is, you know, full, so, for full service public access. Um, we do photocopies and scanning and printing and all oh, that stuff out there. Yeah. Um, and, and as far as I know, we're, we may be one of the only faxing services out, like the entire coast. Um, in town here, we have our tech center, which is right next to Restaurant Row. We're kind of across the street, and that is our, it's our, mo well, it's our main donation center. Got it. Um, it's our tech center. It's our inventory. Um, it's my office, um, and we appropriately call it the cave. We're in the basement of the building. <laughs> um, there's no windows. There's no, uh, yeah, there's no sunlight. And uh, most of the time, the cell phones don't work because they've built all these brand new buildings around us. So the phone service is ah, like so it's dead. not really an ideal location it's, for it's, no. for a technology company. No. Well, you know, I think we are about to go to a short break. Okay. And when we come back, we can talk more about this location, sure. more about what you do, and how folks can help. Cool. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, ThinkTechHawaii.com. I appear on Mondays at 3 o'clock, and my gig is energy efficiency, doing more with less. It's the most cost-effective way that we in Hawaii are going to achieve 100% clean energy by the year 2045. I look forward to being with you. Aloha. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Hi, and welcome back to Power Up Hawaii. 
Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and just energy future. Today we're talking about the importance of computer and technology access for everyone, including poor and vulnerable populations on Oahu. Um, I'm here with Curtis from Hawaiian Hope. Thank you. Welcome back, Curtis. Oh, thanks for having me. So uh, when we went to the break, we were talking a bit about your location. And you guys, are you have your internet cafe out in Waianae. And that, you know, that is something, fax services. It's, it's, you know, it's like no one even needs a fax machine anymore, except for that, like, unbelievably urgent, like, fax to, you know, <clears throat> uh, sometimes doctor's offices, mm. sometimes government agencies, important applications. Um, and so it's, I think people don't think about, you know, what does it mean if people can't access these things? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, so you you, ha you have this out in Waianae, and then you have your service center down in uh, in town. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys do in town? This is where you get your donations. Where you uh, do yeah, your it's refreshment? it's where we get our donations. Uh, again, we call it the cave. Um, it is uh, floor to ceiling computer equipment. Uh, we have, and, I, and I'm not exaggerating this in the slightest. We have um, probably over 1,300 computers in stock. Wow. It's. <clears throat> it is an awesome problem to have. I mean, as a nonprofit organization, um, we appreciate every single donation, donation that we get. Um, but it does create a logistics issue uh, because it comes in faster than we can get it out the door. So we have a crew of volunteers who work on this stuff almost every single day. And the donations come in. Um, you know, you had that one picture up that that was one donation. It's 350 computers. Yeah. And yeah, it's great. Right. You know, and um, the the funny thing is, the week before that, we gave away 22 computers, and I was thrilled because we had an extra like four square feet of space. And uh, you know, so I'm interested to know, you know, so folks give these computers. Yeah. So you guys then, I mean, is it sometimes a real challenge? I would think sometimes it's old technology; you have to load certain types of. Yeah of software yeah. on it? Is it difficult or challenging it's, to refurbish? And do you need to really pay licenses, computer <clears throat> licenses for software? Um, yeah, it is. Um, the, the most common issue that we run into is the fact that uh, a lot of people, they, they pull the hard drives out of the computers before they give them to us. Everybody's so you know, concerned with, with obsessed with right, the data security and stuff, which is, you know, rightfully so. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, we do a full date. We you we do a full drive them. wipe. Yeah, we full do. It's it's uh, one of our requirements. We do a full drive wipe on everything that comes in. Um, so even if somebody says, "Well, we just wipe that," we're going to do it again anyway. Um, but yeah, we get maybe fifty percent of the equipment that comes in um, from the personal donations don't have a hard drive in. Um, Those are expensive. It's it's not or really expensive. We can get them for about fifteen dollars each. Mm -hmm. But when you got to buy a thousand of them. Yeah, that does turn. That up. adds up real quick. Um, <clears throat> and then on the laptops, um, usually when they pull the drive out of the laptop, it's also attached to the drive caddy. And so you have to go buy you the drive caddy. You have to go caddy. buy the caddy as well. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting. You're talking about sort of all these pieces of the computer, and, and a lot of folks, myself included, don't know very much about the guts of the computer. So I hear, I understand that part of the work I mean, you do. I you can come down and volunteer with us. <laughs> I can volunteer. Because, yeah, no, that's part of part what of we the, do. Part of the work that you do <clears throat> is um, help train folks to understand these so mm -hmm. that they can then get work doing this. Yep. Could you tell us a yep. bit about that? We, um, part of our, well, first we have no paid staff. And so that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a key thing that a lot of people, I'd like them to understand that. We have no paid staff. All of our, everything we get done is through our effort of our volunteers. And so we have some very, very dedicated people who come in faithfully um, and they work on stuff. And with this process, we take people who are low income or homeless who, or who have a tremendous amount of experience and we teach them technology. They teach them our procedures and we go through and we work on the computers, take it apart, clean it, you know, test everything, test the drive, test the RAM, test the machine, put it back together, install the operating system. So from soup to nuts, folks get the opportunity yep. um, to, to learn how to learn how to acquire these yeah. skills. Yeah. Um, is there, um, can you maybe give us an example of how somebody um, was able to benefit from this training? <sighs> Geez, that's a or a couple of examples. Big list. I, you know, yeah, that's we great. can. Uh, that's a big list. We have um, we have people who volunteer with us that um, even as experienced technicians, they come in and um, because we work with a different segment of the population that a lot of other IT shops do, we do things differently. Um, one of the things that we do is we we can prevent a machine from getting infected with spyware 
adware, junk, viruses, you know. Um, the antivirus programs are great, um, but they usually clean up the mess afterwards, mm -hmm. right? So they, they're like, oh, hey, by the way, you got infected. Do you want us to do something about that? Um, whereas we, we set the computers up in a method um, that locks the machine down and prevents the accident from happening to begin with. Um, and the main reason for that is that a lot of our population that we're giving equipments to, uh, if something goes wrong with it, they're not going to have the money to go get it fixed. Mm -hmm. So it, it has to stay working, mm -hmm. right? And the majority of problems with, with computers now are software configuration issues. It's mm -hmm. not the physical hardware that dies. It's, mm -hmm. it's something gets messed up in the, in the configuration. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the big things that we stress a lot with our training program is prevention. You know, prevent the issue. Um, and so the same way in looking at the physical hardware, we teach them, you know, we teach our volunteers what to look at. Take a machine apart and literally look at the components on the inside. Yeah, so have, have there, so have there been trainees who have been able to take those skills and transition <coughs> them into the workforce? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, yes, we have. We have, we had a, uh, a few of people who do that. The um, uh, one gentleman in particular, uh, he's been homeless, living in his van for 10 years. Um, and he started volunteering with us. Um, and now, I mean, he's, he's not employed full time, um, but he now helps other people uh, with computer questions and computer, you know, tech things and cleaning the viruses up and, 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 and things like that. So he's making, making some money. That's fantastic. Um, where before he had no income whatsoever, you know. Um, I would like to maybe do a, a side thing about our internet cafe, one mm -hmm, of our success mm -hmm, stories mm -hmm. out there. Please, yes. Um, one of our, uh, the same thing, people who volunteer with us, um, a lot of nonprofit organizations, when you volunteer with them, um, you know, they, they try to find stuff for you to do, right? Oh, maybe here, oh, you know, here, clean this, right. or here, Sometimes do that. Sometimes it can, yeah, be a challenge yeah, to get you know, meaningful. Yeah, and um, the people who volunteer with us, though, our objective, especially when you're working at our internet cafe, is to teach you how to run a business. So, you know, it's a full business model. It's a full for-profit you know, environment where it's a, you know, a retail operation. And so we're teaching all of our volunteers how to work the front desk. I mean, you saw the photos, how to work the front desk, how to answer the phone, how to greet the customer, how to keep track of who's coming in the front door, how often they're coming in, um, the sales of chips and soda and rotate the inventory mm -hmm, and to mm -hmm. place the inventory and to do mm -hmm, the daily reports mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. everything. All right, everything about running an operation, a retail environment. Um, one of our volunteers, um, uh, she's been living in her tent with her family for seven years. Um, she's the victim of one of those reverse mortgage scams. Mm. End up living in her tent mm -hmm. because of it. They, mm -hmm. they scammed her out of the house. Um, and, but she hasn't had a job in years. And so she came volunteer with us about a year and a half. She was volunteering with us. And then um, she went to go apply for a job with 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. She's got a full-time job with 7-Eleven. She went through their training course, and, um, and she was so excited. She'd come back, like, you know, after the first three days of the training course. She goes, hey, uh, they do these daily reports just like what we do. I just, it, and it does, it's the same type, you know, and she's all excited because she, she's going through this training program, and she already knows how to do this stuff, right? And she understands it. I mean, clearly understands it. Um, and, but she's telling me all these processes, like how they do things. And she's like, it's just like what you taught us. And it's like, well, that's the point. You know. That's right, yeah. and that that really is stunning. And again, I know that sometimes uh, I I believe there's such a direct connection to engaging folks, everybody, with technology um, and our clean energy transformation, um, and helping the economy through helping folks get work is just one of those examples. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, it didn't. To me, it's, it's interesting and meaningful because we need the folks who, like you, know how to provide these services to um, work with others um, who have more of that energy focus so we can bring all these pieces together at some point. Um, now, this is so interesting. So the work that you do, say, at this cafe, you've got this whole model of operations. I understand that you're looking to help um, other other organizations and nonprofits be able to do the same thing mm. in a way that can also um, provide some income streams for Hawaiian Hope. Could yeah. you tell tell me about that? Yeah. Um, one of our um, one of our different um, ways of doing things 
is that yes, we do work directly with clients and, and, and consumers who need services, but um, our other side of our uh, huge side of what we do is we provide services to other nonprofit organizations. So a lot of nonprofit organizations, when you look at them, they just they they don't have the budget to have an IT department. You know, they don't have a budget to have an IT person on staff. Um, but that doesn't diminish the fact that they still need those services. They still need to get you know the computers and the network and everything else up and running. Um, and so a lot of nonprofit organizations they will contract with us, and we are their IT department. Uh, and so we can provide them the computers. We can provide them the network. We can go through set up their network and their infrastructure and their backups and and you know take care of all that stuff for them. Um, and the cool thing, like as I said earlier, we've got you know thousand plus computers in stock. They got a machine stops working. Okay, here, grab another one. Put this in. Okay, keep going. <laughs> you know, and <clears throat> um, so it, it helps out a lot. Um, the other thing which I would like to just mention, which a lot of people are not aware of, is many grants that are out there for nonprofit organizations. <clears throat> um, they don't cover technology. You know, if, if you look at a lot of the grants that are out there, I mean, the, the grant application will specifically say, "We don't pay for computers." Right. Updates, websites, right. you know, that's infrastructure, and that's uh, that's part of your operation costs. And we don't pay for operation costs. Well, yeah, but you still need to get this stuff done. I yeah, mean, it's important that that folks don't um, don't get left behind <coughs> in in uh, getting computer access. <coughs> and it's exciting because the more you guys diversify in the services you provide, <coughs> um, Sorry. the sort of the more training that the folks who volunteer can get. So we only have a, uh, maybe about half a minute left, but how can folks help you guys at, um, at uh, Hawaiian Hope? Well, we are always looking for, um, we're always looking for volunteers, and uh, right now we are, we are definitely looking for um, some, some fundraising activity. Um, you know, like I said before, just a lot of the stuff that we do is grants don't cover them. We have, we have no government grants, not whatsoever. And so a lot of that stuff isn't covered by their grants anyway. Um, so we're always looking for, you know, cash infusions and, and helping out with people coming in and volunteer their services as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is fantastic. I want to thank you again, Curtis, for coming and joining us and talking about the great work you do. Cool. And that wraps up another edition of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and just energy future. I'm your host, Raya Salter. Mahalo and aloha.